Yo, what's up? It's your boy Bo Bell. Welcome to the final bell. 25th episode. Hey, check this out, man. I got a very special guest on here with me today. My main man, like a brother to me, my man, Paul Eskew. Paul, what's up, boy? What's up, big Bo Bell? How you doing? Bye. That's my dude right there. Yes, yes. sir. <laughs> hey, man, so I, I had Paul to come on. Me and, me and Paul got a lot of history together. Actually, um, Paul's been one of my best friends for a long time. Actually, when I, when, I, when I played in Europe, he actually came over to visit me, and he didn't want to come back. And so we're going to talk about that later on. But first of all, I want Paul to tell you a little bit about himself and then kind of what he's doing now and, and, and kind of how we met. So talk to him, Paul. Yes, good evening. Uh, yes, Bo and I have been friends, like you stated, close to 40 years. Why? And we used to say 35, and that's up to 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's South Dakota, YMCA, correct? But yeah, I'm from a small town called West Point, George Troop County. This country boy, uh, played a variety of sports. Most of the people at Troop County played four sports, Bo. I mm. mean, not lying. it was nothing else to do in the country but play sun up, sun down. So that was my embarkment on, into sports. Uh, I did go to Georgia Southern Western, played one year. Well, with your boy Harold Jones? You yes, Harold yes, Kenneth, yes, Kenneth yes. Jones, mm -hmm. Avondale's greatest. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I transferred to Alabama State. I didn't, didn't play at Alabama State, but uh, I had, I was a great intramural player, let's mm -hmm. put it that way. <laughs> I was a legend on the intramural circuit. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. So the way that I met Paul, I was I was playing in Europe at the time, and I I used to come home and look for run, and so I used to go to the YMCA, the local YMCA, where it was very competitive, and and we actually played against each other. And he always thought, man, he had a little jump shot, but he always tried to run up on me, man, and I had to put that wood on him. <laughs> I had to put that wood on him. Sure, who it was. But long story short, we've been friends ever since, man. And Paul, similar to myself. He's really passionate about helping kids and helping other people. Like one of the reasons that we 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 so close and we get along, we have our little dis disagreements or whatnot, but we always know that we there for each other no matter what. Um, it's because we have a lot in common. Like Paul, really passionate about helping people and developing players and and that type thing. And so now, like even when I started Team Bo Bell. Um, he was with me with the infant stage of it. He helped me get that going. And he had one of the, probably one of the top team. He didn't have as much talent because it was the first year. He didn't do no recruiting. He developed those guys mm -hmm. and, 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 and got those guys to play at a certain level. Because for me, he's one of the best basketball minds around. And so that's why one of the reasons that I'm going to have him come on. So let's yes. talk about that experience, man, when you came in, we started trying to build this, this, yes. this team boat thing from an infant stage. Let's talk about that. Yes, you remember initially you wanted to – possibly merge with another team uh, like the South. And I said, no, Coach Bo. I said, your name is out there. You're synonymous with basketball. So now let's build your brand. Mm -hmm. And that's how the ball got rolling. And me being a coach at the high school level, I just got my ninth grade team and eighth grade team. And we just started developing those kids. Like you said, nobody could dribble. They couldn't handle jump shots, anything. But you always say train your feet to compete and that's what we did so we started from ground level fundamental to sound base uh, basketball and when we played against these teams it was evident that we was more uh fundamentally sound than the other ones like everybody else that we was playing they want to dribble 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 step back it was the era of Steph Curry so everybody want to step back a side step and shoot jumpers and we was getting layups. Right. And we were getting layups most right. of the time. Right, right. <laughs> and, and so, and, and that's, that's one of the things that, you know, on, on my platform, I try to use that to mm -hmm. let parents and players and coaches know uh, the importance of being efficient and effective. And I think through our relationship, you know, having our conversations and doing different things, I think we was able to share that same um, mythology, yes. you know, in terms of um, helping kids get to the next level by starting with the feet work. Okay. And, and, and that's a critical part. But more than that, Paul not only worked with uh, guys, he worked with girls too. And now he's, he's, he's coaching at Maine and helping them out as an assistant. Yeah. He was helping with the, the men's uh, coach who, who team is doing well. Mm -hmm. So they got a nice program over there. So they, real, real quick, touch on what, where y'all at and kind of what you do and what's your position with Maynard in a high school pump. Okay, so for the last five years, I was on the boys' side, and 
I actually was going to retire. Like I had told you, I was going to retire from Bill basketball. I was going to retire from Maynard. And uh, Coach Powell stated that, well, if you retire, I need you one more year. We, we got some unfinished business because in 2016, uh, we went to Macon and we lost uh, in the finals. Right. So she was like, she wanted to recapture that moment and hopefully this year we can do it. Last night we played the number one team in the state, which was Union Grove, and Maynard was right number two. And um, we won handily, I'll put it to you that way. So the next game will be Friday at uh, University of West Georgia. Got it. I think we play in Cartersville, mm -hmm. and that be, we're in the elite well, Final Four now, and then we win that game, of course, trip to Macon. Wow, that's yeah. outstanding. And the thing about Paul, what's consistent, what's consistent, Every team that he has participated on, he's been with, he worked with, those teams have elevated. Not only the team, but see, he elevated the individual player. Because in terms of communication, his communication skills is off the chart. You know, when he communicate with the players to be able to get the most out of the players. And as coaches, right, and I'm speaking to coaches right now, right, if you got a position where you in charge of coaching kids, whoever, right, Really work on being an effective communicator. Now, it's not going to be perfect. And it's not about having an ego. It's not your way or the highway. It's the right way, right? It's the right way. And whatever it takes for you to, to get that player to understand that there's greatness inside of them and that they can maximize their potential. And I think that's the gift that you have yes. in with your communication. And so um, w that's why you have one of the reasons you have a lot of success with all the teams that you've been affiliated with. And well, so I'm proud of you for that. Yes, thank you for that compliment. What I learned that you can't coach these kids like we could when you and I was playing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, these kids have a different mentality. Right. Uh, they really, individualized you got to go to individually mm. and, and, and see what makes them tick mm. and I found that out actually around you mm -hmm. you know you, you've been a mentor for me as well so I found that out you can't coach everybody the same way mm. and um, the team that have the most chaos typically are your more talented team yes and sometimes you just got to figure out how to harness that and mm. I think uh, that's one of my greatest attributes right. at this point right. yeah. well you, you always brought um, and the other thing, too, is your demeanor, hmm. right? And, and we talk about this. We don't talk a lot about it, but we talk about it. You have, a, you have the right demeanor in terms of communicating with players, and, and people trust you because they know that it's coming from a sincere place. And I think that you, certain things you can't hide. See, a lot of guys, coaches, they out here faking the funk, acting like they really trying to help. But at the end of the day, it's, it's for personal gain. And so you do this thing because not only do you feel like it's your purpose, but you love doing it. And, and you was doing AU, you weren't getting a salary, you weren't getting another. You was traveling, you was leaving your business, and all the stuff that you did with me, man. I just want to say that I greatly appreciate it because you're an intricate part of where I'm at today with this Team Bobel. I appreciate it. And, it. and it has grown. And I'm going to give credit where credit due. And you know our friendship go way beyond basketball, but, but when we talk basketball, this dude is one of the only people that I could talk to. And I got some people I can talk to, but I'm talking about in depth, where they understand the game. And then sometimes he can say some things to me that helps me, you know, because I'm always open. Because when you think you know everything, and I did it at high levels. I did it all. I, did, I thought I did it all. But I'm always listening to learn. And he taught me a lot. He don't even know it by just listening to him, having these conversations. So I'm real, I'm real proud of that. So, Paul, let's go a little bit further, man. The state of the game the state of the game today. Then we're going to talk about the female side, then we're going to talk about the boy side. Because what's happening is that transfer portal threw a wrench in the game. And then we're going to talk about parents. We're going to talk about that whole relationship. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you merge that? What's your you know, philosophy in terms of communicating with the parents and the whole nine? So let's answer that first question first. Okay, let's start with recruitment, yep. actually. Uh, there was a survey done in Gwinnett County. Just, let's take football, for instance. Last several years before the transport portal came about, they were recruiting out of Gwinnett alone 250 D1 athletes. Mm. Then you go to Cobb, another 150 D1, and then APS, another 100. Now, Gwinnett is like down to 100, mm. one of the biggest county in the state of Georgia. Mm. They don't have to go and recruit anymore. They can go right to the uh, transport portal. Mm -hmm. And you say, why is that important? This is the reason why it's important. You can go in the transport portal 
and get somebody that's already been in the system, mm -hmm. been on the uh, weightlifting program, nutrition, mm -hmm. and uh, the body has matured, mm -hmm. and now it's just plug and play. Right. It's plug and play. So you can be 0 and 10 one year, and then the next year you can be 10 and 0, mm. just going through the transfer portal. Mm. Mm. That is so true, man. That is so true. But now, so talk to the parents, uh, uh, Paul, about the coaches. Yes. Uh, how can they help their kids, one, get more visibility, right? Get more yes. visibility. Two is prepare themselves. Because, you know, for me, it's preparation opportunity. They got to meet. Yes. So if you got preparation, you pair and you don't get the opportunity, that's not going to work and vice versa. Yes. So how, how do, what the preparation opportunity, so how do you prepare to get in today's climate yes. to get that exposure? Well, actually they need to come see Bo Bear because you start them at five years of age and once you become fundamentally sound, everything else is going to shine. But if you bypass the fundamentals and then you start trying to go to the three-point line, it's gonna show. Everybody can, sh everybody work on the three-point game, but nobody work on footwork, feet work. And I always told you that. Uh, matter of fact, this is your DVD, oh. and this this is ninth to 2013, and it says volume two, so it has to be a volume one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it had to be a volume one. one. Yeah, we got the volume one and, and the volume three. Yeah. yeah. So the parents, I would just say this: uh, you gotta trust your, you can't trust your kid with everybody mm, speak. you can't trust your kid with everybody but you need to find your legitimate coach that's not worrying about uh, wins and losses but character development uh, things of that nature and then once and then let the, when, once you find that coach let them coach mm. you be a parent mm. and let them coach mm. now it's so many like when we was coming up we didn't have Facebook Instagram Twitter so now you can get a lot of exposure a lot of exposure you can and the line and the games are being streamed so you can make your own highlight highlight tapes so mm -hmm. that's one way but i would just say parents sometimes become uh too aggressive uh thinking the kid is better than what they are i'm simply i'm gonna tell you about my experience with my child you know my child you train them too yes. but i had a heart to heart you know come to jesus moment come to jesus moment with my Thank with my son and i said son I know Bo Bell been training you and I've been training you. I said, but do you really want it inside? Mm. I said, if you don't, if you're not willing to get up at six and you're not ready to start back at 12 and you're not ready to go back at 6 p.m., I said, don't worry about playing basketball. And I said, if you don't want to do that, let me know now so I won't waste my time and money. And he finally decided, well, Dad, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go to FAMU mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and just be a student. Because I, I let him know, mm -hmm. if you're a Five, ten, or less, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got to be exceptional. Mm. You got to be exceptional. Mm, mm. If you, uh, you got to, you got to have, you got to be able to lock down somebody, or you got to be able to shoot. And in my, in my situation, he was a shooter, but he didn't put emphasis on defense. So, and he was honest, and so now he graduated, and and that's the part I just wanted to share with the audience. Yeah, well, see that that's that's the whole thing about this basketball thing and sports in general. Uh, when you're working with these kids now, more so than ever, it's got to be bigger than basketball. Because as we know, there's going to be kids that going to fall off. There's going to be kids that's going to lose interest. There's going to be kids that have the pinch, think they have the potential, but they don't. And they have these unrealistic expectations, right? But you still can give them some life lessons so that they can go and be successful in their lives, no matter what they decide to do. So therefore, and that's one of the other things that I like about what Paul do, he, we share, we have in mm -hmm. common. He teaching these kids about life. He teaching them about life because he connect with those kids. And that is so important. So coaches, what we're saying, and what Coach Paul is saying here, is if you don't have the information, man, and, 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 and no, nobody know everything, right? Go get it, find it somewhere, get the right information. If you're really trying to help, or make make it better for kids in the community, etc. But if it's just about you, and it's a difference. I know when it's just about somebody else, sure. about it's personal, and it's not about about the kids really helping somebody. Because you see a lot of guys screaming and hollering, rah, 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 trying to impress the parents, right? Yes. But no substance, right. no substance, you know. And that's the internet, and that's what threw a lot of parents off, where they can't really see 
what's real and what's Memorex, right? Damn. This is right, because everybody, yeah, he doing all that. He getting the shit. He a dog, he a dog. What? <laughs> you put a dog on Luca, right? <laughs> he had 89 fouls and be fouled out for 25 games because your skill should be your dog. See what I'm saying? And so that's what I always liked about you. Now, the thing too, Paul, that uh, I want to touch on with you real quick is um, the, the, the NIL. The NIL, man. Yeah. What's, your, what's your take on that? I mean, I got mixed yes. views about it, but I think they should get paid. We should have been getting paid a long time ago, even when we was going to school. But there got to be some type of mandate, some type of control, because if not, Whoever got the biggest bag gonna get the biggest players. Period. True. So what's your take on that, bro? Well, if you go back to history, it, players has always been getting paid, <laughs> whether under the table or not. Facts. Remember, Facts. you know, shoe boxes in the mailbox Facts. turning over with two hundred thousand. Facts. <laughs> Those hundred dollar handshakes after the games. So players is always, you know, been getting paid. Now, I, I do like the NIL to a to a degree. Um, but it's only for the top athletes, if you ever notice. Yeah. It's, only, it's not one through 55 on the football team or one through 15 on the basketball team. It's really that one or two. So it's a very small percentage. Right. So everybody that's uh, trying to get that money, you're not going to be successful by it. So you need to develop other skills. You know, somebody's going to need an accountant. Somebody's going to need an agent. Somebody's going to need a bookkeeper. Uh, a driver, so you know, I would say go go that route as opposed to that nil. But they should get paid. Yeah. I I think they should get paid. Now, to your point, it has to be some kind of boundaries, uh, and who knows? They may come out with some legislation uh, eventually where you know there may be a a, a ceiling, uh, it's something to that to that nature. But who knows in the future how? It would pan out. Yeah, I mean, I just think they they, they, they should do something in terms of, I, and I agree with you. I think mm -hmm. they should be able to monetize their name likeness um, because you know the schools are making all this money off the back of those players. Mm -hmm. And then I just think they should have, okay, just say if you have a certain period of time at the college, there should be some type of trust fund set up for these guys, True. just in case they get hurt. Uh, or, or anything, any kid that go to college, there should be a trust fund built up for him yes. because they, they done made money off the back of those players. And so that, that's my position. And I think they should get the money. Um, but see, one thing about money, man, it don't come with instructions. True. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times these guys get the money and, and it come quick, it go fast because nobody's giving them the education. So one of the things that we doing to, to kind of be proactive uh, in my academy uh, with Team Bobell, we have an education enhancement program. And this is what we mean when we talk about bigger than basketball. It might not seem like a bigger thing, but see, they didn't teach me about a checkbook in high school. True. I didn't learn what's the value of a dollar. I didn't know how to, I didn't know what a 401k was. I didn't know what stocks was because yeah. I wasn't taught none of that stuff. So now we have to use our platforms, right, to deliver that information to these kids and to the, to the parents too, because yes. they didn't get it. They're in the same position as we, we didn't get it. So um, what do you think um, about that? Well, first of all, they didn't want you to learn those skills in high school and college. They need you to be the worker. You know what I'm saying? They, they want you to be the nine to five guy and that way they can keep you harnessed. But if you become an entrepreneur like you and myself, then your potential is unlimited. The NIL, I'm going to tell you who has the best advantage, I would say, is the women, mm -hmm. believe it or not. If you look at, let's say, Angel Reese, she's valued at $1.4 million in college. Now, when she comes to WNBA, guess how much she's going to be worth? She's only going to sign for about $120 and $125, and that's its top 10 player. So she actually, and Kaitlyn Clark, they make more on the college level than they ever going to make in the WNBA. So that's one good point for the WNBA. But the other sad point is that there are only 12 teams in the WNBA. Uh, that means it's only going to be 12 positions on each team. So that is limited in terms of opportunity. So uh, for the WNBA, if you're going to make your money in college, 
go ahead and make it because when you get to the NBA, you're going to have to, uh, WNBA, you might have to take a pay cut. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it, it, like I say, it, it's pros and cons to it. Um, I know another thing, uh, another avenue for a lot of players, and it's just certain countries that pay a lot. Like in Russia, you can make a meal, mm -hmm. you know, and, and on the female side. Some, some countries can make 700, 500, you mm -hmm. know, depends. And, and if you're one of those guys, you got to be a, a WNBA player that's coming to play over there. Like your girl, uh, the big girl, Brittany. Brittany, yeah. Huh? yeah, she was making a meal. She's making mm -hmm. a she's making a million dollars before she got in that situation in Russia. So, and then I remember Maya Moore. Maya Moore, Maya Moore was making a meal. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, the money is out there for the girls, and I, I agree with you, Paul, about it's, it. It can be more valuable for the, on the female side because still, for whatever reason, man, girls are not getting. They're just do, especially on the next level. True. And, 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 and I watched the soccer. I watched the soccer. You know, they all got together. And so now they finally yes, getting true. their respect. They're yes, getting true. their respect. So at some point, I think they need to get whatever the girls did with the soccer, they need to do the <laughs> same, take the same approach. Equal so pay. Just, yeah, man. Because <laughs> them girls, look, man, when I want to watch a good, a, a, a yes. good fundamental basketball game played the right way, I watch girls basketball. I do too. You know what I mean? It's just so much fun to watch. But that's an example of what me and you always talk about, playing the game the right way. True. That's a prime example. I remember, you remember, and, and I want you to talk about this. When, when I was playing in Europe, and I was in Europe for 13 years, like I said, this is my best friend. Yeah. He came over to spend some time with me. I was in France, in Malouz. In Malouz, it's, Malouz, it's called Mood House. That's what it's called. Well, that's where I was at. It's right close to Germany. Mm -hmm. Paul came over. He really didn't want to come back. So, but anyway, long story short, we talked, that's 20-something years ago. True. Ever since you left and, and we started talking about what we saw coming, remember when we talked? We started, we started back then, and that's why I got, I laid my hat on that feet work stuff. So tell them what you saw from a transitional standpoint that was coming, that we saw it. True. Explain to them, and now it's here. What you saw. What I saw, Wow. What I, first of all, what I want to say that people don't realize that when, you, when your season was over, per your contract, you had to stay an additional month or two months and train their players. That's right. that, they, don't, they don't know that aspect of playing overseas. So I saw, I saw that then, and then I saw, man, bigger guards. Like, you was a guard over there. Six, five, six, six guards and six, eleven guards was like the norm. But everybody could handle the ball and they could shoot. This was 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Go ahead, ago. keep going. And uh, I was just, I was so amazed. And people always say, yeah, you know, Americans more athletic. You know, they they, they can jump higher, run faster. But like you always say, where the ground, where the where the ball uh, game is played. On the ground. On the ground, right? So what goes up gotta come down. Come down. And over there, they put a lot of emphasis on fundamental. A lot of passing drills, footwork drills. I remember you had this one drill you picked up from over there where you had a soccer ball, you had to kick and roll and drill and kick down the floor. And that was so innovative when you brought that back over to America. So yet, yeah, uh, they're catching up with us. The yeah. world is catching up. And if you don't believe me, look at the Olympic games and the world games. I don't think we won like number one in a while. Even last year when Ant-Man and all them guys played, they, what, they end up in fourth place so the world is catching up to america in terms of basketball and it basically started with fundamental basketball mm. so, yes well I, and i and i agree with you catching up but i think they are catching up but in my mind is more so we're going backwards and the way i say that paul is because we have gotten bored with the basics of the game the basics man and Easy said because um, the internet has played a major role in that, man. You know, like all these, uh, I call them false prophet trainers. <laughs> they're false prophets. You know, and no offense to these guys, they think they're doing their training. You train dogs, cats, chickens, and animals. You develop people, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're not reaching them inside. You're just teaching them drills. So guess what? You get in the game, they don't even have an understanding of what goes into what you're doing mentally. Because everything starts here. You know, start with your feet, and the goal is to put the brain in the feet. And once sure. you do that, right, through your process of development, in these different components, right, then it becomes instinctive. 
That's the magic sauce. So I said that, I said all that to say this, Paul. Like, the European players, by far, right now, from a technical standpoint, a technical standpoint, technical and tactical, a better overall basketball players. And the people at the top, you hear when a lot of these head coaches are talking about it, yes. a lot of some of the top back. They, uh, the the, the, the uh, CEO of uh, NBA just came out and spoke on it. Yes. He spoke on like, man, we got to do something different. Uh, Silver, he just spoke yeah. about it. And so what I've been preaching, what we've been preaching forever, is finding, manifesting at the top. Now they're seeing the Luka and the Jokic. And if you do uh, 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 an international team today, against the NBA All-Star team. I don't know who would win. On paper, the stats and all that, I can do it? No. The reason I say that, they would have a slight advantage European because those guys are always taught to play as a team. Yes. See, us, it's all individualized. Now, we incorporate our stuff, but we used to being that man on our team, so we used to scoring. So we, we, it's hard for me to tell Steph Curry to go stand in the corner True. where everybody else play. Where these guys know how to play with and without the ball. And sure. that's the thing that at grassroots, where we got to continue to teach our kids so that we can continue to give our guys, because it's only, what, 400 and some jobs in the league. There's 125 occupied by players from international. Yes. So, what do you think, Paul, that we can do different? And I say we, I say all of us. Mm -hmm. I think my mythology and how I've been thinking all these years, I always felt like I was ahead of the game because we yes. saw it coming. It's not like this didn't pop up. But for a lot of people, it's new, but we saw it. I played with them. I saw it. True. A lot of them guys could have came directly to the NBA from over there, but they choose to stay over there. True. Like Drazen Petrovic, rest in peace. I had a chance to play against him. Yeah. Sabonis, he finally came, but he was limping. Yes. Had he came when he supposed to came, uh, Sabonis, his son, actually played in Indiana. No, he's yeah. playing in Sacramento right now. Yes. If he would have came over here, and I'm telling you, when he was in his prime, we would be talking about him as the greatest center to ever play this game. That's how good he was. But go ahead, answer that question for me, Paul. Well, I think you would go back, you gotta go back to the roots, the roots of everything. And we already touched on it, but it goes, you gotta go back to the middle school, elementary schools, and start with the basics, man. Fundamentals. out. And it transfers to all sports. People don't get, you know, don't get that confused. You, if you're doing ladder drills and hurdle drills, that transfers to baseball, basketball, football, track. And you're working on muscle twitches and hand eye coordination. So you got to start at a young age. And we can't get behind the eight ball. It's, nowadays, you can't wait till your child get into eighth grade and now want to learn, learn, you know, learn how to play basketball. You got to start young. And I've had some parents come to me in the 10th grade talking about my son is good and then uh, you should be able to make him better. I was like, you behind the curve, the eight ball now. Mm -hmm. You know, kids been five years old bouncing the ball. You can't bring him to me at, in the 10th grade to make him a star. So going back to early childhood and starting with the basics, man, the fundamental. And then the other skills will catch up. And that's, that's going to be the beauty of the game. I've had kids that couldn't walk into bubblegum, but once I started them, the agility drills, both, and then when- With their feet. With their feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I started that, and then they started pro hopping and Euro and spinning, and, and then Euro and up and under. Man, once they figured out their feet, and then the, when, the, when they put the skills together with it, it was, it was just, it was fabulous. Let it was fabulous. This. this was in 2013 right here. Yeah. And this is the Anatomy of the Ultimate Player, Volume 2. I got a 1, 2, and a 3. And a 3. Right? And this is Train Your Feet to Compete. This is 2013. This is, we are 24. It's 11 years ago. We saw this, I retired 2000, what, 2000, 1999. And I've been on this feet work stuff forever. But just the long, in this, in this information right here, it's all about feet work and mm -hmm. making people conscious of what your feet can do right here. And so this is coming, and we're we putting it back out, and also we got the volume two, the volume three, and the volume one that we're gonna put, and you'll be able to get to this. So stay mm -hmm. tuned, we're gonna have this back out for you. But, <laughs> but my point is, the reason I, I brought that up, Paul, is because we have to get a different approach. What I've noticed, and you learned that too, and that's why one of the reasons you was able to get your kids to maximize, not get better, mm -hmm. maximize, is because when you saw the 
the work that you was doing with your jewelry stuff with that feet work. Like you'll come in my gym and work with me. I know you mm -hmm. were stealing, but it was okay. I knew mm -hmm. you were stealing work. I knew you were stealing. I knew you was getting it because I wanted you to. You wanted to share. Yeah. I wanted to share it. Because the more you can help, yeah. that's what it's all about. And so that's why I, I've been giving away a lot of information. Just giving mm -hmm. it away. Just giving it away. Because I want people, and it ain't about me, it's about helping someone so they can help someone. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all with me. And and you know, Paul, like he always tell me, man. Man, stop, stop, stop doing that all the time, you know, because I'm so giving. He's like, man, no, no, don't do that, man, don't do that. So, but anyway, it's hard for me to change that. But all I'm saying to you, parents, coaches, and anybody that's working with our children, man, get the right information, man. Mm -hmm. It's either right or wrong. It's no in between. I'm not saying that Bo Bell know it all. I'm not saying. I'm not saying Paul Eskin. But listen, the proof is in the pudding. I've done it, and everything I teach or I convey, I've done it myself. So I knew it worked, and so many kids have benefited, right? And we ain't talking about the coaches around has benefited. So you got to lose your ego, whatever you got going on, go get the right information. And then listen to me, believe it or not, it's all basics. It's all basics. Okay. So Paul, let me ask you this too. When you get a player, right, and this is that, when you evaluate a player, what is the first thing that you look at when you when you when you first get a player in the gym and you look at them and you evaluate them, you take them through the whole process? What is the first thing that you look at? You know, you would think I would look at a jump shot, but I actually look at movement, coordination, lateral movement. Can you slide, run, slide? Can you lift your feet up and move? Can you get to a certain space with less steps? That's what I really look at. Cause the other things you can teach those things, but if you, until you get the feet right, then uh, everything else is going to be wrong. So, like you said, it's coordination. And last year, I, I had a goal at my ninth grade team. I, mean, I had this guy, um, and he said he wanted to dunk. So I said, okay, yo, you're willing to work to dunk, you know. So I just started having him doing, you know, hurdle work and power metrics, jumping on one leg. I said, jump all the way down, hop on one leg all the way down. Come back on your left leg. Hop, hop, bonnet, hop, bonnet, hop. And within a month, the guy was dunking. And you saw him the other night. He plays on the varsity guy, Will. Shout out to Will. But those are the things I look at. Can you move? Are you coordinated? And, you know, it takes longer for a big guys to get coordinated. But that's what I really look at, coordination. Right. And that's, that's, that's a critical point. And, you know, game movement and, and, and training movement is two different deals. Because when you when you playing – in the game and the adrenaline's kicking in, uh, can you control the emotions of your body, mm -hmm. right? Can you control that? You cannot control your emotions if you're not in control of your plan. And what I mean by plan is I think every player, like some guys are gifted. God say, boom, that's yours. You know what I'm saying? Do you, I'm gonna ask you this. Do you really think they're gifted though? Well, well, yeah, I, I do. I do think that there's some guys that just got more of, but they have to take more of, and they have to develop it. So I think yeah. like some guys have natural uh, gifts. So like some guys got a natural instinct just to put the ball in the basket, but some mm -hmm. guys have to work hard on that. And I'm gonna give an example, Steph. The reason mm -hmm. he's such a great shooter, it's a lot of work went into that. Yes. But it's a, it's a, he got something natural to see the projection of that ball going in the basket like that. Yeah. So that's why he can almost shoot those shots with his eyes closed. But I, I just want to intervene. I, 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 I always go back and forth when people label somebody as gifted, like they'll say, oh, he came out the wound shooting. Uh, you know, he's gifted. And I, for one reason, simply, if you even look at, go back to the greatest player, let's just say the greatest three, let's just say Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron. I don't really think they was all gifted players. I think it's what they put into the game. You, this is your saying, if you put 100% in, you get 100% out. On your tape, you said 1% every day for 100 days, you'll be 100% better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what happened with, with Kobe. I think that what happened with Michael and LeBron. You remember, of course, everybody knows the story. Michael got cut from the high school team. You, you notice Kobe, he, he couldn't, he, overseas when his dad was playing overseas, he was like uh, not even a starter. Right. And you know the story how he got better and better and better. But I think it's hard work because I got some guys that 8th, ninth, 10th grade, oh, they were the bomb. Yeah. Middle school champs, 
in the 100 yard dash, the middle school basketball champ, but they never put nothing back into the, their game right. and they stayed at that level. Right. They stayed at the level. So to your point, mm -hmm. okay, so just so we be clear, right? Gifts and talent is two different deals. You see what I'm saying? So some guys are gifted. When I say gifted, right? Everybody, like, I know some kids, eighth grade, can just jump up and just dunk the basketball. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't do that. That's a gift. He ain't work, he ain't did nothing. All he can do is jump up. That's a gift. You can't teach that. That's a gift. Now, the talent, you have to take that gift and you have to turn it into a talent. And once you take that gift and turn it into a talent, then you put your personality on top of it. Then you become that guy. So some people got the gift of speed. Some people mm -hmm. got the gift of athleticism. Some people got the gift of just having a strong mindset. Some people just having a gift where they can damn figure out, they can, you open up a computer, they can tell you everything in there. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. If not, everybody can do it. Those are the gifts I'm talking about, unique gifts. Example, LeBron's is a freak of nature. How many guys like that you've seen before? Like he just a pure, like body, like his body looked like that in high school. That's a gift. That's a gift. When I see guys like that. Now, no matter how gifted or how talented you is, it's like work without faith is dead. And if you mm -hmm. don't take that gift or that talent and you don't develop it, you just got a gift and you just got talent. So that's, that's, that's been that's my way I look at it. Said. Yeah, that's, I understand. I yeah. Hey, I want to interview you, man. Yeah. I want to talk about your AAU teams when, I want to know some of your greatest AAU team, maybe some of your players. Going back to the Georgia Stars, Boy, man. <laughs> you got enough time? <laughs> <laughs> Bert, we got enough time? <laughs> Five minutes. Five man. minutes. Right. No, we go. It don't take long. No. Um, I was, I was, for, first I started off with the Atlanta Celtics. When yes, I true. You remember that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, the only reason I got involved with that was because of my nephew, Swain. Fuzz. Fuzz. <laughs> That's the only reason I got involved with AAU, because I was just retiring. Yes, it's true. Yeah, and so it was the Atlanta Celtics. Mm -hmm. And so I started working with those guys. They thought I was crazy. I remember going to Home Depot, getting them, you know, them long sticks. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of those, and I used to spread them out and turn them into hurdles, and I set them up different ways, and I started working with their feet, because that's what I saw them doing over there. Yeah. And they couldn't understand why I was doing this. Then I taught them um, how to be efficient. We had three offenses, and one of them was the flex, purposely, because yeah. we had good athletes. Because mm -hmm. when you teach them how to do the flex, like in my program right now, from my third grade all the way up to my 10th grade, every team in my program has to do the flex. Mm -hmm. And the flex teaches you how to play with and without the ball. Right. So we implemented the flex, right? So, no story short, we took that team, had, you know, we ran through the country, back-to-back -back national championship. With that team, listening to me, a lot of people don't know this. That team lost four games in four years. Mm -hmm. sure. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. Four games in four years. Who does that? Ain't nobody in this state ever did that. Right. At the highest level. We talk about the Boo Williams. We talking about all the top. Yeah. We talking about all that. The Bob Givens, all of that. And every tournament we went to, we either won it or was in the championship game. Right. That, that was crazy. And, and it wasn't because we had all the best talent, because I ain't had no pros on that team. Yeah. You know, we had some good guys, some solid guys, but we didn't have the, the six, nine guys. You know what I mean? We had some good guys, but they played hard, they played smart, and they played together. So that was one. Then I went to the Georgia Stars. That's when I got Lou Will and those guys. Yeah. That same thing, did the same thing. Lou Will, Mike Mercer, Sherrod Curry, Jared Cook, all those guys. Chad, Chaz Wright, and a host of other ones. Right. Ran through the country. Did the same thing with Afro. That was the third one. Yeah. Afro with them. Ralph Sampson Jr., Tony Woods, Travis Leslie, uh, Price. I, I, yeah. You had Lance too, didn't you? Lance, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had uh, Mufan Yadofa, yeah, who's Mufon. coaching in the G League right now. Head right. coach in the G League. Uh, shoot. Darius Morrow, uh, Wesley Weatherspoon. Wesley, Wesley. <laughs> went, to, went to Memphis and went, got yeah. Johnson. I had all, Tanner Smith, who's coaching. Oh, all Tanner them, Smith I had on the team yeah. too. All them guys, I had all them guys on one team. That's awesome. Did the same thing, but all them bought into team first, me second. That's the key. Team first, me second, and those things are helping them kids not just with 
basketball, but it's helping them in their life. And if you look at all these guys, they all are productive in their lives right now, even after basketball. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, um, those was those yes. was fun times, and then, and, and and I think we kind of raised the bar in Georgia. We did, we uh, sure did. Uh, across the country with those three teams. So yeah, man, we uh, that was that was that was uh, that was a great experience. And you was used to be coming around. Yeah, I, I, that's when I first got involved with it. You know, yeah. I was working, but yeah, I had to come around. Yeah. But my favorite backcourt was always Lou and uh, <laughs> Lou Will and Mike Mercer. I always oh, told you that. Crazy. Man, that was, yeah. They yeah. had that chemistry, man. That yeah. was out of this world. And I, I remember Lou used to play off the ball a yeah. lot. Yeah, he and let Mike, Mike handle the ball. Mike handle the ball. And see, this is what most people don't know. Lou was one of the most selfless dudes. Me, y'all can say what y'all want to say out here. That's my dude. You know, always be my dude. Lewis is one of the most selfless guys that people ever know, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to say this, and I'm saying this on camera, is because he moved to the side. Like, he, he moved, like, he altered his game so that Mike yeah. can be a part, so they can play together. Yeah. Like, he, that, that whole process, Mike going to South Gwinnett, Mike was at Holy Innocent. Mm. I got them put them together. I put them over at South Gwinnett. And yeah. then guess what? They became the best backcourt in the country. They did. They really in did. In the country. And it was like a show. Like, you couldn't even get down 316 on Friday. <laughs> yeah, it was like going to watch the Beatles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but, but said all that to say this, man. Um, you know, what you, you remember, put down? You remember when Mike hurt his knee? I was on the phone calling you. Oh, yeah, you yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. What's up, Paul? You keep bugging my phone. I said, yeah. man, Mike just hurt his knee, man. Yeah, you told me when he was at uh, at Georgia. Yeah, they played. What did they play? What did they play? Where they play? Where they play? Kentucky, was it? What was just it? somebody South Carolina, but the game was pretty much over. And I thought he was getting ready to dunk. Yeah. And he was running fast, and he's and I saw it. Yeah, game out. Saw, yeah, you saw that. Yeah, I yeah, called yeah. you, man. I bought in tears. I was yeah. like, man. Yeah, I remember that day. You just kept blowing my phone up, man. Yeah. <laughs> but no, man, it's um. You know, this is this has been a journey, and now yeah. it's time to continue to help other kids and help other players but for the people that don't know Bo Bell and Paul we've been out here a long time we're not just out here beating our chest man we're doing the work we got we got boots in the sand That's and right. so for you parents man find get you some coaches and people that really care about your kids man that really truly care about your kids how you know do they care about your kids it's not gonna be what you see on the internet it's gonna be how they treat you go in the environment go around them Talk to other people about them. Now, regardless who you talk to, you're going to have one person that's going to say something bad about them. That's, that's life. Like, one person going to say something bad about you, no matter what you do. <laughs> Think about what they did to Jesus Christ. <laughs> he knew that they was going to, he knew mm -hmm. that that person at the table was going to do him wrong. And guess what? They didn't even believe he was the son of God. Mm -hmm. And so, who am we? Who are we? All we doing is trying to do our work. And so, Paul, as we move forward in this next phase in our lives, man, how do you perceive um, not just basketball, with our youth today, with everything that's going on, with all these negative options, and I chose to use basketball and you using sports uh, to reach them, and not just basketball. How do you perceive us kind of using our platforms creatively to help more. Because no matter how much I do, it feel like I'm not doing enough. <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing enough. And so I'm always looking for better ways to help and serve and, and just create, um, you know, the right atmosphere. Well, just keep doing what, you, what you're doing, Coach. Uh, enough, in your opinion, may, may be more than enough for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you got five kids in your gym and and you know one of them can't afford to pay, and which I know you're gonna say, "Well, come on in." Th that's that's doing good deed, and it, it doesn't go unnoticed. So those little things, there's nothing real big or miraculous. It's just the small things that you do, and you know I know from a personal standpoint, all the things you don't get credit for, you don't like to get credit for. But uh, and, and I do the same thing, but it, it's just, it's just a small thing. It may be just dropping the kid off at, from from school. After practice, parents can't get off work. It may give a kid a voucher to play in, in, uh, on your team or get a free training, things of that nature. So, uh, and, and keep praying. Just keep praying. I heard somebody say the other day, uh, they said, who is your best friend? He was like, well, God's my best friend. 
<laughs> so when I opened up the door and I said, thank you, Jesus, he's God, he's he my best friend. Then you come next. Then you come next. <laughs> you don't thank God first. Yeah. You never know. But before, I know you got to wrap up, Coach, but look, I was cleaning up my, my garage and I wanted you to get this to a, a worthy individual. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. I got an extra jacket, man, like the Bo Bell brand. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, you fit. When, you got this, what, four or five years ago? Yes, still man. Got extra, man. Yes, yes. Oh, man, look at this. <laughs> we was giving them jackets, man. We was giving our kids jackets. Man, this, he, did it, he did it big, man. These are full, these are leather jackets, bro. Listen, this is how we do it, right? These are the Bo Bell jackets that we had. Show in the back. Yeah. Together, each accomplish more. And you see that right there? That team? That's what team stands for. Yeah. Together, each accomplish more. And that's what we're about over here. Yes. Man, I appreciate you bringing this. Man, thank you, man. Thank yes, you, man. Yes, yes. And I done gave all of them away. I don't even have one for myself. <laughs> Look, I kept mad. So I got one. <laughs> My man. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you so much, man. That means a lot, man. Thank yes. you. Thank you. I'm going to put this sucker right here, too, I so I don't, I don't leave it. I'm going to put that sucker right here because I done gave it. Uh, all them jackets, I don't really have one of them for myself. <laughs> I gave them all away. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yes, but, sir. Um, man, this has been great, Paul. Um, as you know, our friendship spanned almost 40 years. Yes. And um, just the things that you do, I'm so grateful, one, to call you a friend. Uh, you're one of the only people in my life that I can call no matter what. And uh, if I need something, I know that really you would be there. Uh, I remember when I was in Europe and, you know, I couldn't get things to my mother and I would call you. I said, Paul, my mother need this and I'm in Europe, bro, whatever you were doing, you would drop it and go and take it to my mom, man. Yeah. And I always, I, I never forgot those things, man. And I really appreciate you always being there, but more important, I appreciate you just being a friend, bro. Like, and, 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 and helping and us sharing the same energy in terms in the community, helping people. And, and to me, I don't think you get enough credit, to be honest with you. I mean, I always, I'm always tuning your horn no matter how yeah. I talk, because I feel like he one of the best basketball minds. And if I had a conversation with him, the people that want to listen, <laughs> some of y'all don't listen. You don't want to listen because you listen to respond. You're not listening to learn. This guy, basketball mind, is, is over the top. And so I, I appreciate you for being a friend. Okay, I appreciate yeah. you for coming. It's mean a lot, and uh, man, keep doing what you're doing, my brother. Yes, right. sir. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, boy. Yes, sir. Paul, oh, hey, <laughs> we out, man. Peace. Till next time. Peace. <laughs> Let's go. Good, that was man. good, man.